Hi, I am Dr. Matrika Johnson. I am a physician at Reproductive Specialist of the Carolinas. I am a fertility physician here in Charlotte, and I'm going to answer a couple of fertility questions for you all today. When someone should consider freezing their eggs is a little bit of a tricky question, and I've actually given a whole hour-long talk to OBGYNs on that exact topic. The short answer is age 34. So you are technically advanced maternal age when you were 35, and so the best time to freeze your eggs is actually when you are around age 34. If you're looking for kind of what that sweet spot is, I would say that sweet spot is probably somewhere between age 32 and 36. There is a double-edged sword between doing it too early or doing it too late. When you're 22 years old, I think that, you know, if, if you're a little bit more mature than 22, you know that you may not know exactly what life is going to bring you later on. And so a 22-year-old may not need to freeze their eggs because they're going to meet Mr. Right in just four years and get pregnant in, you know, six years and they never need those eggs. And so the fear of doing it too soon is doing a procedure that you don't need. Then there's also the other end of the spectrum, which is doing it to doing it later on in life. And part of that is women as we age, you know, our eggs become more abnormal as we age. And even if you're living your 40s like your 30s, our ovaries and our eggs know how old we are. And so if you decide to freeze your eggs, you know, a little bit later, you can still get, you know, a good number of eggs. But the problem is, is the quality of those eggs is not going to be as good. When people come in to freeze their eggs, one of the most common questions that I hear is, "What? how is this going to affect me later on? And so what I always tell patients is, you know, it's not going to make you go through menopause earlier. I can't steal eggs from the future. I can only take what's there. It's not going to change your ability to get pregnant later. It's not going to make you go through menopause any earlier. It's not going to change your menstrual cycles. It shouldn't cause you, you know, any long-term, you know, changes in any of your reproductive health later on. When it comes to giving patients, you know, the number of eggs that they need, I generally tell patients that in general, you should have about 10 frozen eggs for every one pregnancy that you'd like to have later on. What I also tell people is your body can only do what your body can do. If your AMH level is lower, you may not get as many eggs as someone that has a higher AMH level. And, you know, I try to tell all of my patients, you should be happy with whatever it is that you get because that's the best that your body can do. As far as looking at testing to predict how many eggs someone's going to retrieve, I usually can tell people that, you know, your antral follicle count or the follicle count that we get somewhere between cycle day two and six gives us an idea, but it doesn't absolutely tell us because that count can vary, you know, a little bit from month to month. I usually will say that, you know, the number of eggs that we get from that antral follicle count is going to be that, maybe plus or minus three or four. I think that people a lot of times don't hear the minus of that. So if we see 10 eggs, we might only retrieve six, or if we see 10 eggs, we might retrieve 14. But the other tricky thing that we need to know is it's not how many we retrieve, it's how many are mature. We can only freeze mature eggs. The process of egg freezing, so it's about a two week process. It starts when you come in to get what we call stem start. And so on that day, you get started on your injectable medications. Um, you usually get started on two injectable medications and those are what we call subcutaneous injections, which translate to their shots that go in your belly. And so you will usually start those and then once your estrogen level gets high enough, you'll start generally a third injection. After that third injection, I usually tell people they're gonna come and hang out with me about every other day for blood work and an ultrasound. And the blood work is to make sure that the estrogen levels are going up, the ultrasound is to make sure that the follicles are growing. And so once we see that the follicles are growing and they're big enough, we give you what's called a trigger injection, which is going to mature those eggs or kind of simulate what your body naturally does as an LH surge. So then once we give you your trigger injection, your retrieval is exactly 36 hours after that, after that trigger. So if you take your trigger injection at 9 p.m. on Monday, your retrieval will definitely be at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. The retrieval is a surgical procedure. Um, you do get sedation. That retrieval procedure takes anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. It really just depends on how many eggs there are to retrieve. As far as, you know, doing an egg freezing cycle and, you know, what you can expect from the medications and how they make you feel, um, in general, the first thing is the medications themselves. So, you know, I will be honest, some people can have a little bit of anxiety with it because it is giving yourself a shot. 
you know, and some people can have, you know, a little, you know, irritation with it because it is, you know, putting a needle in the skin. You can have, you know, some bruising or you can have some local skin irritation and that's purely the needle part of it. The other thing that people can feel, how it makes you feel, is it makes you feel like your estrogen levels are really high. So it kind of mimics the way that you would feel if you were pregnant. So, you know, you can have headaches. You, if you are prone to menstrual migraines, you may have headaches. You can have breast tenderness. You can have changes in your mood. You can have changes in your vaginal secretions. You can have changes in your sex drive. Um, and so those are the different things that people can experience. As far as after the retrieval, the most common things that people tell me afterwards is that they have constipation, bloating, and weight gain. So it's kind of like all the gross ways that you feel at when you're on your menstrual cycle. That's kind of the way that you feel after a retrieval. And it does take about seven to 10 days for all those things to go away and for your favorite genes to fit again. As far as having sexual intercourse while going through an egg freezing cycle, in general, I will say once people get far enough along, I usually say you should probably refrain from sexual intercourse, but it's purely from a discomfort. You know, your ovaries are usually the size of an almond, and you know, when you're going through stimulation, they can get, you know, on the upward sides of like, I don't know, like an orange or in some people even a grapefruit. And so you can feel that. And so it just might not be comfortable. If it's not bothering you, then there's no reason to not have intercourse. Um, I do say that after your retrieval to definitely not have intercourse because the retrieval process, we do put a needle in to get the eggs out, but not every egg, not every follicle yields an egg. And so you may have, you know, two or three eggs floating there and people have gotten pregnant after retrievals before. After your egg retrieval, um, your period will come again completely dependent on the trigger injection that you received. If you do what's called a Lupron only trigger, your period will come exactly seven days after that trigger injection. If you do what's called a dual trigger, which is where we'll give, you know, Lupron and HCG, or if you do an HCG alone trigger, then your period will come anywhere from seven to 10 days, you know, after that trigger injection. And then after that, your menstrual cycles are going to go back to being completely normal again. You know, so how long can your eggs stay frozen? So as far as your eggs, I love to tell people there's no shelf life, there's no use by date, there's no date that says they're going to expire if you don't use them by this date. Um, you know, as far as the data that I've personally reviewed, um, the longest that I've seen eggs crowd preserved that actually led to a live birth was 10 years. Um, we also have to realize that this technology was, you know, it's newer. And so they took the experimental label off of egg freezing in 2013. And so, and it hasn't even been 10 years since then. So I think that at this point, we don't have a use by date.